This video is sponsored by Film Convert. Hey everyone, Flo from Off to Lens here. Today's video is a bit different. I want to discuss my shooting, transcoding and exporting settings as it is something that I get asked about constantly, so I thought I would make a video about it. I will share with you my go-to settings depending on the camera and type of projects, as well as my exporting settings for YouTube and client work. Before I start, don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this one, and let's get into it. As you know, over the past 10 years or so, I have been sharing my work online and I always get asked about what resolution or ISO I was shooting at, what compression I use when filming in RAW, or how do I export my videos for YouTube or clients. This video can be seen as a starting point if you just got your BMPCC camera or your first camera, but also a sort of guideline for exporting and posting on YouTube and delivering to client based on my experience. As this subject is quite broad, I am going to split this video in three main parts with each their own smaller sections to make it easy for you to understand and watch. My main cameras are the BMPCC 6K and the 6K Pro, and one thing to mention is that both these can shoot B-RAW internally, which can of course have an impact on your settings. This means that for example, the white balance and ISO can be adjusted in post. Now let's get into my go-to settings that I use for my documentary and travel work. Both of these situations are ones where you do not have a lot of control as a filmmaker, so I tend to go towards very basic and safe settings. Codec. As I just mentioned, since I use the 6K cameras, I capture everything in B-RAW for maximum flexibility. For years I used to shoot in ProRes 422 and I still think it is a very powerful codec that I still use sometimes especially when filming just for clients where I don't need to edit or when filming for licensing since it is a standard codec. I actually shot all of my BMPCC 4K and most of my regular 6K videos in ProRes. If you don't have either of these codecs in your camera, always go for the most data that you can get as long as you have the storage and computer power. Compression. One thing that I get asked a lot about is what compression I use for B-RAW. I use 12 to 1 for pretty much everything. In my opinion, it is more than enough and unless you do VFX work or heavy grading or what you are filming requires maximum quality, then it is fine. To give you an idea, I shot all of my Antarctica footage in UHD ProRes LT just to save space and it was great. 12 to 1 keeps the file relatively light as well. Log. I shoot in log and always have since my first BMPCC and even when I was filming with my old Canon 5D Mark III. Log gives you the most flexibility in post and the most range out of your image. It is harder to grade of course, but once you get used to it, it makes for a superior image. If you are just starting out as a filmmaker, make sure to get a camera with a log option. Resolution. As I shoot in B-RAW, I film in full 6K resolution. This gives me the most details and also a better 4K image when downscaled. I used to film in UHD when I had my BMPCC 4K and it was more than fine too. More resolution doesn't always mean better, but I do shoot in 6K now for all of my content. ISO When it comes to ISO, I shoot 90% of my content at 400 since it is the native one. I do go higher to 1250 a lot, and if I really need more or if the scene is very dark, then I will use 2500 and even 3200 as well. More often than not, I will have to denoise the footage as B-RAW at these ISO values can be quite noisy. I will talk about this a bit later in the video. Shutter with shutter, I always use shutter angle at 180, no matter the shoot. The only times I would change it would be to remove flickering on some lights, or to adjust to a specific country or location. As a tip, I use the app Red Tools with a flicker-free section, in order to find the best combo to reduce flicker. White Balance Since I shoot in RAW, I don't really need to worry too much about white balance for documentary and travel work. I use 5600 for 99% of my shots. I do however change it for indoor work and also interviews to suit the scene especially when I work with different lights. Frame rate. Regarding frame rates, I shoot most of my work at 2398 since it is the format that I use for a lot of my clients and for licensing. For YouTube content or when I shoot for European based clients, I do shoot in 25 FPS as it is the norm. For slow motion, I capture most of it in 50 FPS. I sometimes go to 120 if I really need it, but I'm not a huge fan of the resolution and soft looked on the 6K cameras. 50 or 60 depending on the resolution and camera is plenty for me since I don't do a lot of action scenes. When I had the Ursa 12K though, AK 120 was amazing and 240fps was really fun. Since I shoot in Bureau, I prefer to do initial corrections and transcoding within DaVinci. And just so you know, my main computer is a Mac Studio M1 Max. Feel free to watch my review. Correction. When I say initial correction, I mostly talk about exposure. I might change the ISO and increase or decrease the exposure. 
Sometimes I also change the white balance, especially for nighttime or indoor scenes. And as I said before, I also denoise my shots and usually I do it in 5 frames, better, and the luma value sits around 8 to 15, depending on the shots. These Shanghai scenes, for example, were quite noisy and it worked very well. Transcoding. As you probably know, I actually edit in Final Cut Pro 10. I often get asked why, and it is just by habit. I started on Final Cut years ago, and I'm so used to it and very quick at it. While set of the 6K resolution, 4K is enough for most projects and clients. So in DaVinci, I always transcode my 6K raw footage to UHD ProRes files, not HQ, just standard ProRes. Editing ProRes files in Final Cut is super quick and it still retains a lot of data. And I always keep both files as I can always go back to RAW for adjustments and I can still use the ProRes ones for licensing too. If I need to make adjustments during the edit in terms of denoising or anything else, I can just retranscode the files and it will automatically update in Final Cut Pro since I use the same name. One of the main reasons that I actually started to shoot everything in 6K RAW was that I actually prefer Gen 4 over Gen 5. So in DaVinci, I actually transcode all my files from Gen 5 to Gen 4 as I prefer the look and find it easier to grade. Next we're going to talk about exporting, but before that, editing is of course an essential step and as you know, an important part of the post-production process is color grading. And speaking of color grading, now's a quick word about today's sponsor, Film Convert. I've talked about it many times on the channel before, but Film Convert enables you to add film color and grain to your videos. There are nearly 20 film stocks to choose from, and you have real film grain. Recently I shared a video called Frames of Shanghai that was created from B-roll that I had captured during one of my documentary shoots back in 2019. It was shot on a BMBCC 4K with a Lumix 12 to 35, which is a very basic kit and I was very pleased with the image that I was able to create and the grading played a huge part in it. The footage was shot in ProRes and most of it was shot at sunrise or at night and as with a lot of my recent travel work, I wanted a filmic look and I took inspiration from movies like Blade Runner or Her. I pushed the saturation a lot and I used quite a bit of grain too. I really wanted a look that represented the atmosphere that I felt there. And as per usual, I used the stock KD 5207. If you want to know more, last year I made a dedicated video where I discussed my color grading process, so feel free to watch it. And don't forget to check out the link in the description to get 10% off. After filming, correcting, transcoding and editing, the last step is exporting. Now again, keep in mind that I use Final Cut Pro, which actually doesn't give you a lot of control in terms of exporting settings, but it does give you many options. YouTube. The last thing you want is your video to look bad online since it is most likely where it will be seen. YouTube hates grain and compression and unfortunately, there isn't much that you can do about it. When it comes to YouTube, I have two main settings. For reviews with product footage and voiceover, I use the up to 4K option which gives you a UHD .mov H.264 file at around 37 meg per second. Which isn't amazing but actually works pretty well and isn't too heavy. For example, this lens video review is 9 minutes and 2.4 gig. When I do talking head setups, whether it is for a review or another topic, or when I share travel or lens footage, I use the same specs but change the bitrate to 50 meg per second. And I created this custom option in Compressor. This gives you a good balance in terms of size and debit, and it does make a difference. To give you an idea in terms of size, the Shanghai video is 2 minutes and 26 seconds and is 910 meg. This 10 bar review is 11 minutes long and 4.2 gigs. As a note, my travel videos are often exported at 3840 by 1634 to keep the wide aspect ratio. And my reviews or other YouTube videos have most of the time a ratio of 2 to 1 with a resolution of 3840 by 1920. I do have a third option when I do very long videos around 20 minutes or more, which is actually another custom setting where the debit is set to 20 meg per second to reduce the file size. This 23 minute breakdown, for example, is 3.5 gig. I don't know if it is still the case on YouTube, but videos are not all equal in terms of quality and they have different settings depending on the channel and the audience size. You can actually right click a video and look at the stats for nerds. Clients. When it comes to client work, exporting is whatever they need. For final deliverables, most of the time it will be dictated by the frame rate and resolution, but on some occasion it can also be the file size as well. And if they are going to edit and grade my footage, then I will push to give it in ProRes. Licensing. With licensing, the default codec is ProRes 422, so I send all my files in that format and most of the time in UHD, both in log and graded. If you are interested in footage licensing, I actually made a video about it, so feel free to check it out. That's it for me for today guys, hopefully you found this video helpful and if you did, please give it a like, don't forget to subscribe and let me know if you have any questions. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.
Also, feel free to check out my two ebooks, Freelance Documentary Filmmaking and Travel Cinematography, where you can find a streamlined but comprehensive overview from pre production all the way to marketing, built on years of my own experience shooting short documentaries and travel videos around the world. And if you are interested, I'm also doing filmmaking mentoring sessions when you can ask me anything about a wide variety of topics. 